Thanks for waiting, guys. We're just going to get started. Patty Mullen will be here in just a moment. But I want to welcome you all to the New Jersey Horror Con and Film Festival here in wonderful Atlantic City, New Jersey, in the Showboat Hotel and Casino. I hope you all are having a good time so far. Is that correct? Yeah. We good? Yeah. I like that shirt, man. So you know why you're here. This is an exciting panel for the film Frankenhooker. We have two of the stars from that film. Now, I've watched this movie twice this week. <laughs> and it, I regret nothing. Like, it was such a wonderful time, and I'm glad to have, actually, James Lawrence here. Give it up for him, please. Um, Thank you. I'm, I'm, I'm glad to have you here on your own, uh, because I'd like to uh, have a, a little time, because when I first watched Frankenhooker, it was after King of New York had come out. And I'm looking at, I'm looking at this guy, and I'm like, I know that face from somewhere. I know where, I know this guy. And I gotta tell you, the death scene <laughs> in King of New York, I don't know if you guys remember this, is more gnarly than anything in Frankenhooker, in my opinion. You mean being uh, spiked in a, in into fire a fire hydrant? hydrant? Yes, yeah, yes, yes. insane. Um, so are you, a, tip, are you a, a New York based actor? I mean, because. Yes, I am. I'm from New York, uh, grew up there in Queens originally. Uh, you know, it's funny uh, that scene that you mentioned about the King of New York. Yeah. Uh, Lawrence Fishburne is the first time I got to actually work with a really big star and somebody, and he was such a great guy and a really nice guy. And you know, uh, in between takes, he spoke like, "Well, yes, thank you very much, I appreciate." It. And then he was like, "Yeah, motherfucker!" You know? And so he rips the um, the mask off of me when I'm hanging on a car, and I got scratched by his nail. And I love that, that I got scratched. You know, I always <laughs> kept that scratch. It's, it led to a staph infection, but I took care of that. <laughs> you took your whole cycle of antibiotics. So you got to well, take the I, whole thing. I had to actually have a whole facelift. <laughs> uh, so the thing I like most about Frankenhooker is that it's such a tri-state area movie. <laughs> this is very, even though, even though Jeffrey and Elizabeth are from New Jersey, it's a New York movie, like down, all the way to having the New York that I remember and appreciate for probably all the wrong reasons. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> do you, did you have any experiences while you were shooting on, was it, it, was, it was on location, right? Or? Pretty much, we, we stole a lot of the shots. I mean, the, the, the shot where Frank and Hooker, Patty Mullen is coming up out of the subway was kind of improvised on the run. I mean, if the, <laughs> Authorities would have come. We probably would have been, you know, shoot away. Uh, but uh, no. And Frank Hannon, a lot of the director, that was his intention. You know, it's one of the last uh, films that are captured on film of pre-gentrified New York yeah, City. Yeah, yeah. Um, and that's not such a bad thing. But <laughs> but at the same time, a lot of people talk about uh, you know what it was like in the good old days, and you know when you get mugged in every corner. <laughs> The, you know, I can't believe we wish for those. Days yeah, I, I mean, I think that's just how nostalgia works. <laughs> I, I, I'm the same way. Uh, we have had a couple of incidents. Let's see what happened. Yeah. Um, uh, we, I know we hired a lot, a couple of homeless people that were on the street, mm -hmm. wound up becoming extras. Nice. Uh, I'm sure some of the hookers and the hooker scenes were authentic. <laughs> uh, you know, uh, but. Uh, yeah, that was the whole, the, the whole, it was also the reason why, by the way, there was a big crack epidemic going on at this yeah. time. I don't know. Uh, and, you know, this movie that Frank talks about all the time, Hen and Lotter, it, 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 among other things, and the reason why it has lasted this long is there are messages in here. This is an anti-drug film. <laughs> well, you know, we could, we, yeah, well, you smoke crack, you blow up in, in this movie. But the fact is, you, you know, you do. And, and in a way, I mean, the, being from New York, I would say that the crack epidemic at that period, like during that period, was kind of just getting above, like, the, in, in the, like People didn't on the know, radar. Yep, yeah, it was just sort of coming, you know, into the, you know, general uh, uh, media. You know, people were starting to cover it that, you know, what is this new drug? You know, this yeah, new I, and I, I appreciate that. Frank would do that, <laughs> you know what I mean? Because well, I'm, you know, not many people were in that way that is not necessarily making light mm -hmm. of it. 
but in a context well, that is light enough. You can make you can... light of something if you're trying to prove a point. Yeah, absolutely. And the same thing goes with the treatment of women in this film. Yes. And, you know, this is the, the idea. Is that, listen, this guy gets his gets his due, you know? Yep. <laughs> you yep. know, this idea of, uh, uh, of wanting to, you know, bring his his girlfriend back to life. But wait a minute, I want to have the woman that is shown to me in media and in mm -hmm. magazines, and I want the perfect tits and the perfect legs. And, the, you know, it, it's a real statement on, so, on that. I want to ask you about that, because in the first act of the, of, of the film, we see that Elizabeth is, oh, and <laughs> it, the news report, brilliantly written, and they reinforce, yes, she is a girthful woman, or was, right? <laughs> and and uh, what I'm curious about is whether there were more scenes that didn't make the film that actually reinforced how superficial Jeffrey might have been. I mean, there was plenty out there already. Yeah, but. no, there really wasn't. I mean, what you saw is what you got. A yeah. low-budget movie, you, you really can't... Uh, most of it is what you see. Yeah. I believe what they cut out were like frames of things. <laughs> sure. Like a scene couldn't last so long. Mm -hmm. but, uh, no, but in terms of that, I, you know, uh, I like girth, personally. I sure do, too. <laughs> but, I mean, you know, they, uh, this idea of, you know, the treatment of women, uh, the, the drug mm -hmm. epidemic, uh, you know, these are all very uh, subtly in the film, and I think that's why it's endured. Why are we here talking about yeah, this? Yeah, absolutely. Right? This should have disappeared with, you know... Movies from 25 years ago. What I've been thinking about about the, the movie, because I haven't watched it a couple times recently, is I think the, the reason why it endures, and it, it kind of got me thinking of like my own personal definition of exploitation in the, in, as, a, as a genre. And what I came up with is it's an earnest commitment to the absurd. <laughs> like everything is played very straight. Yeah. And everything is ridiculous, but everything is earned. Like there's a build that happens, and you guys are nod, so you know what I mean. It's, it's organic almost in this way that is in this world that is insane. But none of, there was never a point where I was watching and I went, what? It just, everything came in its own, in its time. Well, it's, uh, <laughs> yeah, I think, I think that was all on purpose. If, yeah. if you really blow it up more, I mean, no pun intended. <laughs> uh, but it's a, it's a cartoon. I mean, you mm -hmm. know, when these when these bodies explode, all you see are sparks and flames, mm -hmm. and and uh, it's 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 you know it, it is uh, uh, overboard. You know, yeah. it, it's not realistic, and uh, maybe that has something to do with the the charm of it. That you know, uh, I but think there so. there is there is no profanity in this movie at all. Not one word of profanity, and there is no gore aside from. A splash of blood that you see, wow. on a, you know, when she gets hit by the lawnmower. Yeah. So, you know, when you have that, uh, you know, it's hard to, you know. Oh, here she is! Everyone, give it up for Patty Mullen. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna thank James for, Hi. for positioning himself on that side so that we could both bask in the glory of, of Patty here. We were just Aww. talking about the movie. Thank you so much for, uh, for joining you. us. And Thanks. I'm glad, I'm wearing purple in honor of, of Frank and Hooker, so. Oh, that's great. Thank you so much. Um, I don't remember what we were talking about because I have well, been on the super crack. And now so. it's time to talk about uh, the, how she came up with you know, her character. Yeah, that, uh, that is something that I was curious about because the way that you moved, and then there were some moments where there was, it, there was <laughs> that something else happened. Right. You know, and it was just so magnetic. And, and I, I was curious about how much influence Frank Henelotta had on, on the choices that you made yeah, and with the character. Yeah, he had every bit of influence. I mean, it was all of his ideas. He was always right beside me, mm -hmm. you know, telling me how to walk and telling me how to make the face. Uh -huh. and, Oh, that's it. Yeah, that's it. That's the face. That's what I <laughs> do. More of that, right? Well, it was a it was a perfect performance. I, you know, I, I was telling James and everybody else here that I watched Frank and Hooker twice this week. Oh. Um, it's available on Vudu, you know, Walmart streaming service. You guys know about that. I just want to plug it in case y'all want to get them streams going. You know, what I mean, I've got to report this to the union. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, where's your checks, man? We're still wondering. <laughs> so. Patty, and then I, I also want to hear from you, James. How did this project come to you? 
I just got a call from a casting agent, mm -hmm. and they suggested I go down and read for Frank. And Frank was there, and he had all resumes on his desk. His desk is a big mess. <laughs> And he was all excited about this movie and told me about it and had me read. And uh, that was really pretty much it. He made his decision right then and there. Like, this is, this is, this is what we're going to do. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I have to talk about Super Crack. I'm itching to talk about Super Crack because it's hilarious. Um, <laughs> And I want to know particularly, like, well, well, first off, were you on set during the selection slash crack bonanza? Were you, were you there for that? Or what was, like, what was that experience like being just like surrounded by? You said bonanza. I was thinking of Lauren Green. And, uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> Sorry about bonanza. that. Bonanza. Uh, you mean like when I was picking out the? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No. Uh, you mean when I was driving in a car? When you're in the room measuring them and all that. No, yeah. no, no yes, that, yes. She was in a bath at that point uh, to help keep her alive and keep her... Oh, I mean like know. the act, the actor. <laughs> she literally was in a bath to keep her alive. In real life, she was. <laughs> I wasn't there that day. <laughs> um... Okay, thanks, thanks to, uh, to Chris Stiles, my man here. He's got, me, he, he's got me thinking about all kinds of other things. And, uh, but it was so taboo then, right? To have any kind of drugs like that in a movie. Yeah, that's what we were talking about, like, how prescient yeah. the importance That was one of the things, this movie got an X rating when it was first cut, X. And, and, and because of showing crack smoking, super, super <laughs> was crack. One of, how they actually do it. You, could, you weren't allowed to show that. And um, now look what they show. Some nudity. I mean, that, that you could see in any film at that point, you know. <clears throat> right. Uh, it was in Time Magazine. Time Magazine. We actually, this was the first movie to get an NC-17 rating. So you wow. could see it if you were 17. But it was like, it, 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 when you get that type of rating, you cannot advertise mm -hmm. these films. So, you know. This, it opened That's playing it Midnights. Un underground. Or, uh, <laughs> did it, so did it play in one of those theaters that was <laughs> in Times Square? Right, right. <laughs> like with right. all the rest of them? It was right. the Tad yeah. Steakhouse Theater. <laughs> <laughs> what was that? What was the name? Tad Steakhouse? Yes. yes. Closing this weekend. Is it really? Oh, my God. Sorry. Six months? Six months. We got six months, everybody. Get to Tad's we right away. We have to go before it closes. All right. You're on. You're on. <laughs> no, I have, uh, just to, to bring, uh, you know, you asked Patty how she got involved with the movie. Yeah, yeah. So I got a call from Frank Henenlotter one year before this movie came out. Mm -hmm. I was in a, a film called Street Trash that had come Oh, yeah. Out. Dynamite. And um, he had seen this movie and thought, I don't know, who, I didn't know who he was. I'm sorry, <laughs> I didn't know. I picked up the phone. He goes, hello, this is Frank Henenlotter. I'm working on a movie called Frank and Hooker, and I'd like to use you on it. I'll get in touch with you. I didn't hear from him again. A year went by, and I got a call from my man agent. Said, "Oh, you have to audition for this movie called Frankenhooker." You know, I was like, "Oh," and uh, sure enough, it was the same guy. You know, we. Uh, you know. Unfortunately, I had to blow him to get the part. Well, well you know, you, hey, you do what you got to do, on, right? James. She got it automatically, but it's you know. all in good fun. Well, is there any way you can rewind that and? Just <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. He wants to cut that out. Uh, James, my favorite part of your performance was all of the, all of the self-talk, all of the, it may, oh, oh, the formulating and the and the the, the doubting improv. and the questioning, all that. That's what I wanted to know. Yeah. Like how much of that was written and how much of that was riffed. Well, it was very, uh, it was very carefully directed. Meaning, you know, when you're on camera for long periods of time, it's very uncomfortable. <laughs> like being up on this stage. You know? And so uh, I, I got this habit of uh, mumbling and doing things. And so then Frank would, you know, we would kind of go over what I, you know, I would yeah. do, and then he would say, okay, use this, do that, don't do that. So it was very, very, it was, it was, it was improvised, but it was, it was carefully directed. <laughs> like he right. 
kind of picked and chose, you know, what it, would work for him. It really came off as if every single word was chosen specifically for the madness of this character. So that's a testament to your performance for sure. Uh, I mean, uh, Thank you. both like uh, both times that I'm watching, I'm like, yo, how? Like, you don't you that you you can't write that. Or like it's too fast. It's too crazy. Yeah, and and it was also just so true to 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 Jeffrey as as it was as he was developed, you know, that it's really cool to know how much you added to that because I really don't know that I would have been as invested in the character and the and the narrative if you hadn't added that to it. So that's awfully decent of you to say. It's the truth. James and I had a we have a favorite in the movie. Or, I know. I think what, we both what, agree. What is right? that? What is, what is that? She's in the box. Yes. <laughs> okay. Okay. I'm it's very, It's a really traumatic no. story. I've, I've said it. So my cousin in the front row here. We drove down today, and um, Jan Saint is that the name of the actor? He's a brilliant character actor yes. who passed yeah. away not long after it's, that. Yeah, he passed away. I know that this is dead time of me just like sitting here in it, but you have no idea how much I love that line. Me too. He's perfect. so He's perfect. much, and it's seamless because it's. And, and you guys remember the scene, I, and I feel like it's, I just want to talk about it again. Like I remember that time when I was like, yeah, I was like, and he's talking, and he's like preaching. And he's into it, and he just seamlessly finds his way in a conversation with Jeffrey. Oh my God, I just, <laughs> she's in the bar! It's so great, it's so great. Um, you know, one thing to say. I'm glad it's, when I, I'm glad it's not just me. He's stop reading the Bible, and he's oh, just like, Oh man, <laughs> you know, he's so uh, good. He, I said he passed Loved away. Uh, he, you know, he committed suicide, you know? Yeah, and, yeah. And, uh, he jumped off the George Washington Bridge. Mm -hmm. He did. And, you know, I don't, I, I mean, I don't mean to get serious here. Hey, we really should right. be aware of, of uh, depression and, and, and people and, and, you know, uh, it's something to, to, uh, to recognize in him. I mean, he was a brilliant guy, mm -hmm. why, you know. How much so, time did, did, were you able to spend with him while shooting? Or not really? much. It like, set. But, just, I yeah. mean, he was my favorite from yeah. the very beginning, and when I heard that he was gone and how he was yeah. gone, and it just makes your heart heavy. It's just, just so genuine and, and, and real. And one of those talents that you see them, and it's like, yeah, that's like, yeah. And, and especially because we were talking about how much New York talent was used for the film, and I'm watching, and I'm, in, I'm a New York based person as well, and I'm looking at that guy and watching him perform, and I'm like, no, he does this. Like, he does this a lot. Right. Like, or he can, you right. know what I mean? Right. It's funny to see like how many people are in films. That it's like, you know, these are classically trained yeah. workers and they could, like, they could destroy any role that you put in front of them. Um, Patty. Yes. I'm sad that I haven't seen you in more movies. I know. Well, I Me love too. New York. And I went down to South Florida. Yeah. And I stayed there. Yeah. Year after year. After year. I just got back. Just got back to New York. So, can you do more movies now, please? Anything is possible. All right. Because anything I learned in life, it's that anything is possible. <laughs> yeah. are, are there, and this is for both of you guys. Um, what was, well, number one, what was the reception to the film when it, when it, when it first came out? And... Like, how, how did it impact your lives as actors and just as people in the world being spotted, perhaps, or, you know, grabbed on the street as, you know, especially, especially you, I mean, being the wonderful never, starlet of the film. Never, never, never. Because my hair's blonde. Oh, uh, okay. Really? No one, no one, not even... No, and if they did find out, they would say, wow, you did, I, you, but you're so short. <laughs> <laughs> because they expect me to be, you know, six feet tall. Mm -hmm. It's amazing. Did you ever get recognized? No. <laughs> that's, that's crazy. If I had seen you guys on the street, I'm, I'm the weirdo. Hey. Who's into deep cuts and all? Like we talked about King of New York, right? Like right off the break. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I'm sorry that I did not have the opportunity to to fan out and fangirl for you guys because I totally would have done that. Um, what's it like being back in New York? It is wonderful. The people have a certain sense of. It's not just the accent; it's the attitude. Well, it sounds like you didn't leave. 
I, I'll never. That's, <laughs> that's part of my character. It's part of who I am. And like I said, it's not just the way we talk. It's the attitude behind it. Mm-hmm. You know? and, and it's that humor. <laughs> I just pulled next to somebody in the gas station. She said, put $20 in. Nothing's too good for my baby. <laughs> New York. You got to love it. So you've got, you've got two daughters? Two daughters. And I guess they're grown up? 16 and oh, 18. Okay. So yeah, like big grown-ish. You know? big, big girls, yes. How, uh, and sorry for getting into like life stuff, it's okay. but it's, you know, it's okay. I, I, I appreciate the time. Um, it's fine. What was motherhood like? The in, best. Like in, in South Florida? The um, best. I really know. hope that um, they leave South Florida. I just, you know, <laughs> they're well-traveled, yeah, but yeah. I just, you know, I found myself living in South Florida that it's very different oh, yeah. from any place I've ever lived. And I want them out of South Florida, to be honest. They'll find their way. How about, you, how about you, James? Family or, you know? Yes, I have one daughter. She's 24 years old. All right. And she just saw the movie for the first time fully a couple of years ago. What did she say? Uh, well, uh, you know, she, her mother was a little against it, but... Uh, uh, <laughs> She's 24. And that's why we're divorced. No. <laughs> <laughs> No, she, uh, no, I, I think she's, uh, yeah, it's great. I wish I was in South Florida, though. <laughs> so, uh, Me and the Mob, is it fair to call the movie that, that you wrote? Me and the Mob? Fair to say what? Is it fair to call it that? Because I know there was another title for it. Well, it was called Who Do I Gotta Kill? Right. And, and then we called it Me and the Mob, and it got a little release, you know. What was, I mean, I'm, I'm a screenwriter as well. I'm just curious about the experience of, you know, d- d- developing uh, uh, your own story, you know, like wh- what was the kernel of the idea, different things like that. I mean. Yeah, it's, it's uh, just to let you know how anything starts. If you guys are trying to make a movie or get something going, you know, we just decided to do something. We wanted to make a film, so we said, let's make a short film, you know, mm-hmm. and so we made a short film and shot some scenes and we showed it around to some people. And yeah. Next thing you know, people are interested in wanting to get involved, and uh, all I can tell you is proctologists. <laughs> I'll tell you something, they got money. I, I, they, we got two proctologists that put up a couple of, put up almost $50,000. All right. And then by the time we started going, they were bought out by some other people. So <laughs> just kind of, you know, doing, you know, instead of talking about it, I know it's hard to do, I, but, you know, actually shoot something or, you know. And then, then you, you get your... Uh... In my experience, I think, I mean, not just medical professionals, but other professionals in specialized fields, like, they want to be in the mix. Like, they want to be in the movies. Like, it's like making stuff. Well, I got rectal examination from both of them. I don't know what the hell that was all I'm, about. I'm sensing, a, I'm sensing a pattern here. I don't understand. <laughs> Is it not what you're supposed to do? I don't know. <laughs> um, Patty, I'm going to bug you again. Okay. Okay. So, and actually, I I'm, I'm, want to open this, this question up. I mean, you're both creative people. I would, I would call you both artists in your own right. The opportunity to make your own thing and create your own thing, like it takes a lot of work and resources uh, to, to get something done. But pie in the sky, especially with you back up north and, in, you know, in the mix. And I, where are you based now, James? I live in Pearl River, New York. All right, terrific. So you're in the area. I'm not going to ask you if there's going to be a Frankenhooker too. I'm not going to ask that because that's, you know, but like, do you have any dream projects or things that you've been thinking about how it would be fun to do? Lots of dream projects. I don't think there'll be a Frankenhooker too either. Sorry, guys. Sorry. He feels there's nowhere to go with it, but he does want to do something else using us in a different way. I don't know what way. He um, just did a documentary that I really, really loved. It's called Boiled Angel, about Mike Diana. Have you heard of it? No, I'm sorry. He's an artist. Uh, He's from New York, and he went down to Florida, and he would draw these... I wouldn't hang them on my wall. (laughs) 
<laughs> but they did everything down there besides cut his hands off. I mean, he wasn't allowed to own pencils. He wasn't allowed to draw. It's a really interesting Whoa. documentary. They took his pencils away. They, they, they did. They yeah. took his pencils. To they find him. They could stop by his house at any time to see if he was drawing. They said, we are not the crack alleys of New York or the gay bathhouses of San Francisco. We are Florida, and we do not, you know. I mean, <laughs> really, Frank did. That's... This documentary is, I loved it. Boiled I Angel. Loved it. I loved re- it. It's so important. It's such an important subject. You can't... You, you know, you see the attorney in court. This is not art. This line is not straight enough. It's not. Oh, jeez. I mean, it was just, it was, you got to see the documentary. I, I, I'm crazy about it. I think it's his best, uh, besides Frankenhooker. <laughs> best ever. Do you, ha- do you have any dream roles, though, where you're like, yeah, I would, I would nail that and I want to do it? No, I'm into writing now. Okay. I have a book I've started, and I'd really like to finish that. That would be my dream. Definitely. Is it a memoir or? It is. Okay. Yeah. I think people want to know what. It's, it's very interesting. Cool. I, I think you'll like it. I can't wait. Okay. You've spoken it into the world. Now it has to get finished. I know. I spoke it a lot of times into the world. It's like past having to get finished. I got <laughs> James, dream projects, things you, you have on the horizon, anything? My dream was to be here on stage with you. Yeah, right. And, uh, yeah, right. Ever the charmer. But I, really yes. yeah. but I, um, I got a couple things coming up. I, uh, I have a small little thing in this movie called The Irishman that's coming. Oh yeah, out. beautiful. And um, tiny little scene. How uh, tiny? What do you do? Tell, I me, get, tell me. I get spit on me. by Al Pacino. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, there's a movie I worked on that's sh- just finishing. It's a, it's a horror film called The Stay. And uh, it's, it was shot independently, and uh, the premise is a guy that owns a, a hotel, it's like a haunted hotel, and he's trying to kidnap one of the guests to sacrifice her soul to uh, barter for the devil to get his sister's soul back. It's really a good movie. Wait, was that when you had a knife and a cape? Yes, yeah, I have a oh, knife and a cape. Yeah. Okay, okay. So that might be coming out soon, you can look for that. I can't wait. I can't wait. That looks so cool. All right. Good, good. I've got one more question, and then I want to make uh, the, the, the mic available to anybody who has questions from the audience. Um, the actor who played Zorro in Frankenhooker. Zorro. What happened to Zorro? Everybody, everybody has that question on their mind. <laughs> He's He's great. so perfect. I know. And like in my head, like, I'm thinking like, okay, if, like what else is true about this guy? And I made up a whole like backstory for this dude. Like he's this just jacked guy with uh, the most perfectly manicured mustache, and seems like although he has bitches, kind of polite, doesn't like lateness. He's just very like there's something very disciplined about the way that it was played. Uh, but as a, as a as a person or as an actor, like what was what was he like? Was was he as intimidating as he appeared on screen? Very sweet. I found I, I thought he was really nice. Yeah. Well, his name is Joe Gonzalez. Mm-hmm. That's the actor's name, and he was a very sweet, nice man. Uh, but he looked intimidating, and you know, you that's why they cast him. Yeah. But in between takes, we you know we talked very nicely and. Uh, he was actually, uh, you know, very interested in what was going on and mm-hmm. was a professional. I don't know why we haven't seen him again. I don't know, uh, you know. Life goes on. I'm gonna... probably in South Florida somewhere. <laughs> yes. it's, a, it, it's the place to go, apparently. I mean, okay. Tell me about these boots, though. Like them? I sure do. <laughs> Yeah, these are the boots. How heavy were the ones on no. in the uh, so film? The movie, they, you know, shoes like this really weren't out yet. Yeah. So they built them, and they built the bottom, the sole, the bottom was made with wood, and there were two pairs, and one were level and good, and there was another pair that always knocked me off my mm. gate and, and, and made me slip. And when you see me catching myself, yeah. I really am. <laughs> just about to go down or like, it was those bad shoes. And I was always looking for the good ones. It was hard to tell the difference. Mm-hmm. 
Well, you handled it expertly, you know, it seems. The top so. had baby bottle nipples <laughs> in there. What? That's how they made them so pointy. They, wow. Very, very old school. Everything was so Yeah, you do what you had to do. I mean, it was all pra like practical effects for everything, right? right? I mean, I miss those days. Uh, yeah. do, we ha do we have anyone in the, no, in the uh, I, I didn't like my shoes either. <laughs> I didn't like what I wore. I didn't care for them. You had sneakers. You, How no, about you? You had, shoes. Those, you had those operating yeah. shoes. What? I'm in musical theater, and one of the most recent shows I did was Evil Dead the musical, the parody of the Evil Dead movie. So did you ever think maybe a musical version of Frankenhooker? What's that? Might there be a, a musical version of Frankenhooker? Oh, she, she, did, did you, in what you imagine that would be so nice? I, I did Evil Dead the musical, and it was like yeah. She did Evil Dead the musical, so. Oh, okay. Yeah. Hey, you never know. That that's a great in. idea. <laughs> it is it really a terrific is. idea. It really Ma like, is. I, there's a lot of Frankenhooker song. There's the I Love Patty Mullen song. There's Sixty Nine Eyes did Frankenhooker. Rabbit did Frankenhooker, and they did a good job. I they think, did a really good job. I, I think thought. you might have your next project. <laughs> like I will, I will see the hell out of that thing if that happens. Because there's something, and I was, uh, and for, forgive me for crawling up my own ass for this real quick, but I wanted to repeat that my idea, like my definition of exploitation films, is uh, an earnest commitment to the absurd, <laughs> and that's to me what musicals are. <laughs> like bringing it back, it's like, oh yeah, this is, this is ridiculous. Why are we? Uh, I'm, why am I crying? Like that's that's kind of the experience for me as well. It's like watching musicals and something like Evil Dead. I mean, that has the potential for that. Why not? Does yeah. did, did, any of you brave folks have uh, have any questions for Patty or James? Anyone? I'm gonna just gonna hog the rest of this time then because I'm I'm enjoying myself. <laughs> um, no? You sure? Ah, funny Frank Hennenlauter story. Do you have one? Uh, what did he, I'm sorry. Do you have any funny Frank Hennenlauter stories? Oh, yeah. Story. That was the question, right? What's funny about it? Oh, he's like a wind-up toy, a bunch of miles an hour. Right? Uh, we need this. We need that. <laughs> uh, it's funny just watching him work sometime, really. <laughs> Get that cat out of here. Remember you see all night after everything was done? Cut. Get that oh, cat out of here. I have a funny story. So, all right. Um, I'm driving this car in the movie. It's like this tan Buick, <laughs> right? That was really a piece of shit. Yeah, it was a hunk of junk. Oh, I mean, yeah. it was like, you know, and uh, it, w it was one of the, you know, one of the production assistant's cars, you know, and so Frank <laughs> says, all right, drive it in and jam on the brake and, you know, so we can see the parts coming out and... I remember I was driving the, hard, you know, the car really hard. And after the first, second take, she comes over and she goes, hey, take it easy with my car. I was like, but it's all rust. Like there was nothing to, you know, to hold it. It was funny when you were there. <laughs> you had to be there. So that was like, that was, I something guess. something up. That was her primary no. mode of transport to and from set that was also was. used in the movie. <laughs> One of those old Buicks, 79 or whatever. And you know, James had to wear these glasses that took up the entire face. I mean, like, the, you, right? They were, they were Frank Dear Henenlotta's boy. real glasses. <laughs> he gave them to me. Those were, were his really? glasses. Yeah. Oh, I'm so he sorry. He wore those stupid things. They Can you imagine? <laughs> now, I, I, in my cursory research of, like, trivia and back, background information about the movie, I read that Frank and Hooker took 12 years to make. No, that's a, no. It took a summer. Is that one summer? I, I, okay, uh, we gotta. I gotta get IMDb on the phone because that's how that works, I guess. And get and and, and fact check that um, because it seemed like a pretty quick deal. Like maybe the lead up, as far as like the development of the story and the the pitch and all that, took that long. I know that some things do, but. Who the hell knows? But I'll say one last thing in closing. Okay. okay. <laughs> to, to bring this to a, like, okay. You know, there, there's, okay. there's very, this is a very interesting film because when it first came out, it was very uh, controversial and, and, and it seemed to have a little bit of an audience. It played midnight shows, it played mm -hmm. colleges, and then it kind of went away. And about 15 to 18 years later, <laughs> All of the sudden, younger people mm -hmm. have discovered the film. They got it. And this has brought a new life to it. And that's really 
the testament to the movie that you know you discover a classic. I mean, I, I, it's a classic it to is. some degree. It is. And so people, and and that's the, the you know the the uh, the joy of all this. You know mm -hmm. that we we're here and talking to you, and that people are recognizing, and they think it's funny, and they think it's they get joy out of it. And, you know, it's, uh, it's nice to be associated with a, a, a piece like that. You know? I think the sincerity of the film comes through, and that's why there is a timelessness to it. And it, it just, it's, an, it's an interesting example of how just because a movie might not necessarily be gangbusters right away, like there's always time. And I would say that um, exactly. on its merit that Frankenhooker is just worlds beyond um, other films that have had that kind of resurgence, like The Room, for yeah, example, we lucky, yeah. which, I mean, is nuts on a whole other plane. Um, but this one, I think, in watching it, I'm going like, this, is, this movie is perfect. Like, there's no movie like it, and there can't be, because it'll just be, conf be compared to this one. Right. And yeah, it was, it's just, it's delightful. One last thing. Um, the the fat suit was that what you had on that was it yeah in the opening yes um it was hard it was hard for me to buy that you were a girthful lady I was already lady. you know thin and it really didn't make me that much heavier it didn't they should have made me heavy 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 you, you know? would have been game for that I would have been I'm more than game yeah I, I I just I didn't think it was big enough but it worked you know I got I, so, and you're from you're from Staten Island right yes. It gave Order me a picture, race. like the, the dynamic between uh, Elizabeth's family and accepting Jeffrey for the weirdo that he is. Like the, just the, the, the normal. I still accept him for the weirdo. <laughs> <laughs> Something about the normalcy of it made me think like, is this how it is in Jersey? Oh, I was comfortable with James <laughs> right off the bat. And then now it's, you know, God. He, Decades later, and you know, he's like family to me. No, I think we're in for the long haul. Well, I hope so. Yes. Years we'll be talking I think about so, depends. Yes. <laughs> oh, I hope not. I, oh no, I don't want to lose that function. No. <laughs> you never know. <laughs> <laughs> you never know. <laughs> Patty, James, thank you so much for taking the time to uh, to, to sit with us and to talk. And I'm I'm sorry about this list, but I have. Invisalign right now, and it's new. Oh, I didn't even notice. If you didn't say anything. Yeah, it's, it's, I, I don't, uh, I'll show you after. We'll get used yeah, to it. yeah, it's, it's a whole thing. <laughs> um, but thank you guys so much for coming out and, 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 and enjoying this panel. There are going to be many others as the weekend goes on. And thank you. Please come See back. You the All kinds of ones. Great. All thank right. you to, to Chris Stiles. Thank you so much for coming out. Uh, keep, keep chilling if you want for more panels or like enjoy the rest of the show. Thank you so much. This is John Glover, and you are watching Fandom Spotlight. Be sure to like, share, and subscribe. Lionel Luther recommends it. Ah, have some fun. Follow your fandom. <laughs>